Gary Vaynerchuk, or as he's better known, Gary V, is the chairman of VaynerX, a modern day media and communications holding company, as well as the CEO of VaynerMedia, a full service advertising agency servicing Fortune 100 clients across the globe. In addition to fronting those powerhouse companies through the VaynerX brand, Gary also owns subsidiaries like Gallery Media Group, which houses lifestyle brands like 137PM and Pure Wow, which reaches an audience of over 90 million unique users. Gary also serves as a partner in the athletic agency Vayner Sports and his cannabis-focused branding and marketing agency Green Street. There is clearly something I'm passionate about, which is seeing things just a hair faster than the normal other person, enough to benefit from it. And guys, that's only like the half of it. Ever since taking over his family's business, Gary has been making mad bank but he's probably even more famous for his content creation on YouTube, where he's become one of the biggest influencers in the world, continually entertaining his massive audience with moments like this one. I literally want to die instead of fail. Die, death, over. Over the years, Gary has invested in companies like Facebook, Twitter, and Uber, becoming a five-time New York Times best-selling author, and gone on to host a top 100 global podcast in the Gary Vee audio experience. And even though he's making crazy amounts of moolah through all these different revenue streams, the man almost never goes crazy when it comes to spending it. In fact, there's practically no information out there about the kind of apartment Gary lives in in New York, and he keeps his Land Rover obsession on the down low because he clearly doesn't like to focus on these parts of his story. If you literally think money is gonna unlock your happiness, you're idiot. I live in a very nice apartment in New York City. Very, very nice. Instead, what he likes to do is show others how they can transform relatively small purchases into something worth a lot more than that. The biggest thing I look for in a garage sale game is uh, town-wide sales. That's where the entire town gives permits or permission for people to have garage sales and so you're able to hit 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 garage sales in two or three hours. Makes it much more efficient. Whether it's baseball cards, Hot Wheels, or wrestling action figures, Gary loves to take what other people consider trash and turn them into something worth thousands of dollars. Brutus the Barber Beefcake. These two are tag team champions if you don't know. That being said, he does have one giant purchase in mind. In fact, you could say that his entire career is all about achieving this one overriding goal. This is why it's so important to figure out what you want to happen. I would never be running this company if, I, if what I didn't want to happen is to buy the New York Jets. Gary's natural talent for selling his critical eye for content has helped him achieve massive success so far, amassing a net worth in the $150 million range. And while that's an absolute crap ton of money, when it comes to buying an NFL franchise, the question is, will it be enough? Today, we're going to investigate Gary Vee's net worth and find out. What's up, guys? It's your girl, Azalea Hart, back at it with a brand new episode of The Rich Life. This one taking a look at the wealth of financial advisor and entrepreneur superstar, Gary Vee. We recently took a look at Gary's life story over on Before They Were Famous, so if you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more, be sure to check it out. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Azalea Zoe to let me know how you're enjoying our content. All right, let's get into this story. Despite being most well known as an influencer, Gary argues that what sets him apart from other influencers is the simple fact that he doesn't need to be one. He told Inc, I am so business talented that being Gary Vee is my side hustle. I do not need to make money by being an influencer, whether that is selling people courses or t-shirts or using it as a way to get speaking fees or to get clients for VaynerMedia. I need none of it. If I were completely not an influencer, VaynerMedia would still be a $100 million company. Just like Wine Library was built into a massive company by a 20 year old with zero influence. Gary Vee was born on November 14th in 1975 in Barbrus Belarus in the former USSR. His parents found their way stateside in 1978 thanks to an exchange program and his entire extended family, which totaled eight people, shared a studio apartment in Queens. Gary's father, Sasha, began working at a relative's liquor store in New Jersey. He would go on to buy the store outright and over time saved up enough money to move his family to Edison, New Jersey. Around this time is when a young Gary began his love affair with businesses. He kicked things off by ripping flowers out of his neighbor's yards and then used his natural charm to sell them right back. His next gig was to open up his own lemonade stand at the tender age of seven and soon after that he found his way into the madcap world of trading and selling baseball cards. 
you know, the sixth grade baseball card club in Edison, New Jersey changed the course of my life. I got very into this world. I'm one of the great all-time terrible students because I spent 99% of my time reading Beckett and Tough Stuff and trying to buy cards. Gary was able to make thousands of dollars in one weekend multiple times at the collector's market, but things would change for him after being forced to work at his pop's liquor store. Luckily, Gary is always someone looking to make the best of a bad situation, so while attending college, Gary discovered the internet and quickly came to the realization that it would be a powerful tool when it came to selling stuff. He convinced his father to let him build a website for shoppers discount liquors, and that's how Wine Library was born. I was passionate, like just obsessed with building my family business for them. When people like to razz me, they're like, easy for you to say you were given a liquor store. I wasn't. <laughs> I, I built a business for my family and left with no economics because emotionally my parents perfectly parented me. Gary succeeded in giving back to his parents by taking his family's business, which was making around three million in sales, and increased that to over 60 million in just five years. Then in 2006, Gary started his next big venture, content creation on YouTube. He created the Wine Library TV series, which turned him into the equivalent of an online rock star. Thanks to this huge rise to fame, he was able to foster relationships with powerful people like Kevin Rose, Evie Williams, and Mark Zuckerberg. These connections led to Gary investing in startup companies like Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr, earning him hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of dollars. I've come to now learn that I'm looking for both. I have to believe in what the product's gonna do, the mission, the opportunity, but I also have to believe, I've seen some good ones that were just so right, but the person that was driving the business couldn't execute it. During this stage in his life, Gary also began touring around the country as a public speaker, earning as much as three to five million dollars a year, simply in speaking fees. These speaking engagements led to Gary signing a one million dollar book deal with HarperCollins, and he has since gone on to write five best-selling works. In 2009, Gary and his brother AJ founded VaynerMedia, an agency focused on helping brands tell stories on social media. By securing clients like the New York Jets and the NHL, they were able to scale their business at a rapid pace, outgrowing three offices and creating over 500 jobs in just six years. VaynerMedia would go on to sign clients like General Electric and PepsiCo, and by 2016, they were reporting profits of 100 million in revenue. By 2020, that had increased to 130 million. So that's how Gary Vee makes his money. Now, let's take a look at how he likes to spend it. Unlike other people we've taken a look at in the series, Gary isn't about spending his money unless it's something he thinks will end up making him more money in the long run. You know, collectibles like these. Yep, Gary Vee is super into card collecting, and over the past year or so, the market has blown the F up. Just so everybody knows, again, I put in six months of homework before I put out my first post of like, there's something going on here. It takes a ton of education. There's an ungodly amount of mistakes that I see my friends making who I've talked to for an hour by buying a qualifier PSA. Gary couldn't be happier to share his knowledge with his millions of fans, but he doesn't just stop at cards. I paid 50 bucks for all the cars, 50 bucks for all the cars, and this one is just 50 bucks by itself, just this one. In that clip, he took what most other people would consider junk and flipped it into more than $1,000. Hot Wheels, man, it's moments like these that make me think I'm living my whole life wrong. Since I know you guys wanna know what kind of car Gary be driving around, well, I'll let you in on what I found out if you look closely enough in some of his videos, especially his trash talk episodes where he drives around looking for deals, you'll notice that Gary owns a couple different Land Rovers, like an LR4 and a Discovery. Both of these vehicles retail for around $50,000, so even though they are luxury vehicles with more than enough space for all of Gary's trash, he's not exactly breaking the bank by owning them. All right, so now that we've gotten a taste of how Gary both earns and spends his money, does the $160 million net worth pass the smell test? I'd say so. I mean, from what I've seen researching this guy's life, 160 million sounds like the base floor of his net worth, if you ask me. So that begs the question, can Gary V afford to buy the New York Jets? Well, the answer, surprisingly, not yet. Once upon a time, you could buy an NFL team for $100. No, really, the owners of the Chicago Bears did just that in 1920, but hey, that was 100 years ago. 
Flash forward 80 years and the Seattle Seahawks were sold in 1997 for 200 million, but today you need even more than that. In fact, you need around 1.2 billion just to start the conversation. The Jets are valued at a hair over that price, which means if Gary wanted to buy the franchise, he'd have to leverage a sizable amount of money from his companies and risk debt and potential layoffs not something he'd be willing to do. Gary knows that he's not where he needs to be yet financially speaking to accomplish his dreams, but he's also never going to stop trying. His master plan is to earn enough money to own the team by the time he's 68 years old, which gives him about 23 more years. Hey, at the rate he's been going, I wouldn't count this dude out. All right guys, I think we'll bring an end to this Rich Life video right here. What did you think? Let me know in the comments down below and don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Before They're Famous to vote on what's next and for the love of all that's holy, guys, the next time you see some sports cards at your local corner store, maybe just pick up a pack. You never know. I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Now, we drop a new video each and every day, so here's a recent drop that you might enjoy. We handpicked that one for you because if you like this video, you'll probably like that. We also got playlists like over here, so click on that if you want to see a whole list of a bunch of videos we've dropped in the past. And if you're new to the Fame Gang, be sure to subscribe and turn on them post notifications. And I'll see you guys in another video.